When I asked Chat GPT, uh, mm -hmm. I just asked what is, what are the advantages for the kids to learn Qatar? Mm -hmm. It gave a list of so I, my suggestion out there is to all the parents: if you have children, put them into dance, put them into music. Yeah. Uh, they must take some part of that with them. So that means definitely we cannot build a robot which can do Qatar on its own. So, Mr. Diyodat Persaud, uh, he is a passionate Kathak uh, dancer, he is a constant learner and a teacher. So, he started uh, practicing Kathak at the age of 17 and in 2010, he moved to Germany. Since then, uh, he started his journey to, to teach Kathak uh, in almost all over the Germany. So from Hamburg to Munich, he travels and teaches and also he gives uh, classes online uh, throughout the world. I will give you the official website in the link. So please uh, log on to that and you can get all the information if you want to practice Kathak. Uh, and with that, I would like to thank you uh, for coming to my podcast, Mr. Diodat. So... Uh, let me start the podcast with a simple question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have in India, mm -hmm. Kathak in the north, Bharatanatyam, Kuchipudi, and also like a lot of um, Western classical dances. Mm -hmm. Compar comparative to all of these uh, classical dances, mm -hmm. what do you think how difficult is the Kathak to learn or to teach? Okay. Um, thank you so much, Giri, for having me on your uh, podcast today. Um, it's a pleasure being here. Um, nice question. Uh, I mean, the, the, the word classical itself tells you that, um, you know, some amount of, not some amount, a lot of practice has to be put inside of it. So whether it's Western classical or Indian classical dance, it's the... The, uh, the level of difficulty or the level of training that is required, I think it's going to be equal across all dance forms. No? There is no skipping or stepping over or getting away from that uh, aspect of it. And um, in comparison, I would say all classical dances are the same. They require dedication, devotion, and a lot of, lot of years of riyas and practice and constant learning, constant self-improvement. That's cool. So um, I've actually heard that there are a lot of dialects of Kathak because it's a very old dance mm -hmm. and uh, demographically it also uh, have it has its own dialects. Right? Definitely. So if I really want to learn, find uh, the, the real Kathak, original Kathak, where do I find it? Um, well, as you know, the, the Kathak uh, has its uh, roots basically in the, in, the, in the temples of India. 
and um, that would that would um, be the Rajasthan area. Okay. Yeah. So the Jaipur Garana that I belong to, um, that is the the school of learning that I practice, is the Jaipur Garana that is considered the oldest um, form of Kathak. So you born and brought up where actually Kathak has born. Um, I wasn't born in Jaipur. Ah, okay. Um, no, no, no. I was born um, in a in South America, different place altogether. Gary. Ah, okay. So, um, yes, uh, but of course, uh, with time, that has uh, it, you know, there's been a merger of um, Kathak. Like when the the Mughals came to India, they influenced the dance a little bit, diff slightly different, and uh, it took on a few um, Persian aspects. This is the only classical Indian dance form that has an influence, uh, a, Mo no? a Mughal influence. Then you have a merge of the Jaipur and the Lucknow together. That's called the Lucknow Garana. Then you Banaras Garana become, mm -hmm. is there. Then you have Raigad. You know, so there are about four, four different schools of learning of um, Kathak. But the original, if you're looking for the original, um, one would probably have to say it's the Jaipur Garana. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> I didn't know this. <laughs> okay. So, um, when I asked Chat GPT, uh, mm -hmm. I just asked what are, what are the advantages for the kids to learn Kathak? Mm -hmm. It gave a list of uh, positive things Definitely. like cognitive uh, development, uh, physical development, social development, emotional, blah, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, are these really true? Absolutely. Um, absolutely. Um, let me just talk from my uh, experience you know um i have never I, I was never an individual that um that could actually take to the front of uh, and speak to an audience no? or people as such and in the school when we had the, um, these impromptu speeches no? or you had to go stand in front and the teacher will give you a topic to explain something or say something about this topic mm. i would become so nervous i would shake i couldn't get my speech together it was very difficult for me and when I started dancing, of course, it didn't change there either. You know, um, mm. I remember my, my, my first dance performance, um, standing in front of the people. I started the dance before the music even started. My gungurus just start shaking because I'm so nervous. No, but with time, and I've, that has shaped my personality in such a, uh, such a different way altogether that I'm so confident now to stand in front of an audience, hundreds of people, thousands of people, and deliver a performance. And that that is um definitely uh the dance definitely influences your personality your behavior your skills all of that what you've said what Chad gpt has given to you is indeed true okay. from my perspective no? yeah, now, yeah because um, you you grow with it. it 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 shapes you differently your social ability the amount of people that you come into contact with um yeah it's there's only pluses yeah because it's, it's removes your stage fear, right? Exactly. Im it immediately. Fear. It removes fear from everything thereafter. You can approach any anyone, anything, any situation, and you do it with confidence. No? It's such a confidence right. builder. And that is something that I always tell my girls in this in the class. No? No? Let the dance empower you. Don't let it take away from you. It's not supposed to take away from you. It's supposed to build, build you. Mm. Give because you confidence. What I've seen, like of course, I forgot to mention that my daughter is also a, 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 it's a privilege that uh, and thank you for accepting my daughter oh, to be your welcome. student and she really uh, picked up very fast mm. and she really liked it. Oh, that's beautiful. She's enjoying it. Um, what I observed in her that like expression, like because the everything, the dance, of course, it's a movements, but it's ex expressing the words mm -hmm. right they are feelings mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so um, it, it, i think it's also uh, helped her to express herself effectively definitely yeah. and uh, in uh, her uh, mother tongue or deutsch german whatever mm -hmm. but it improved mm -hmm. her uh, expressing uh, herself uh, yeah herself yeah, and that and she's small no? when she grows that will continue to grow with her yeah She'll just get even better no, oh, that's interesting yeah. Okay. Hi. The motto of this channel, Wisdom Vibes, especially the the podcast part, is not only to bring uh, extraordinary people and uh, expose their uh, achievements, but also to expose the extraordinary qualities in ordinary people. Because we believe that podcasts are the best way to. Uh, 
instantly pass the information uh, from the previous generation to the uh, upcoming generation to become successful in our mission to reach our podcasts to many people around the world we need your subscription so please subscribe and share the values by sharing the videos thank you very much so diyodath can you uh, name a few performances uh, that you have given like which you think are great performances or in front of any uh, large number of audience or that like memorable performances memorable performances um i i do i do um with flamenco of course the i find that the 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 the, the some of the uh, fusion performances that i've done uh, with other artists or other musicians they tend to be um very interactive enjoying and you know um uh recently we i had a performance uh, in uh, frankfurt with a flamenco dancer mm -hmm. and um what is that flamenco flamenco uh, flamenco uh -huh. so so uh that performance went off very well uh the flamenco dancer is such a beautiful person um we had a good rapo on the stage uh, her musician my musicians and when we finished the performance of course uh, we left the stage with the audience clap they uh, they, they stood up and then they they asked us to come again on the stage to do something else again no so these are the small performances or um, the small things in those performances that make it so memorable no the audience calling you back when i was in piro uh, i did with uh, tap shoes and the kahon that is their um, their kind of traditional style of dancing down there oh. so of course that type of fusion again no the audience love when you take a part of their um, culture and merge it with the dance Okay. Of course, I'm all for the traditional too. Um, I, I love dancing uh, Kathak in its traditional form, presenting the the classical format, and um, yeah. But that's mm. that's the general, you know. Um. So it's a traditional, mm -hmm. uh, a classical dance. Mm -hmm. When you mix it or fuse it with something else, mm -hmm. and our uh, um, um, modern dance mm -hmm. or modern Western dance, whatever, uh, do you get any? Up what is that called objections from objections? Uh, the no no not not at all because um i stay in my form and the the, the flamenco dancer stays in her form and we we just have a rapo together with, ah, with okay. rhythm which is a universal thing a universal concept okay. so there we have a play on the rhythm it's not that i am doing flamenco step you know uh, or she's doing kathak you now where that becomes hmm let's yeah. stick to your style um it's not it's not that case so the fusion if you do do a fusion it should be something beautiful something beautiful should come out of it um okay when you clapped i remember actually <laughs> so uh when i observed my kid doing yeah. kathak yeah it's rhythmic mathematical there is math it felt me like there is a mathematics involved in that of course of course um the truth behind that is that you sit there and you enjoy mathematics actually you know um yeah. most of the times we are da dancing in rhythmic cycles no mm. and uh, in indian music there there's a lot of um, tals as we call them tales okay so you have these 16 beats and then you you divide these 16 beats by 3 to make either tihais or toras several of these cycles no so you might have a 32 cycle or a 16 cycle or it's can interesting can you please elaborate i mean <laughs> um there are 60 beats 16 16 oh 16 no? 16 mm -hmm. and uh this is called teen tal the 16 beat cycle no ah and uh, here we have things um when you divide the 16 uh by 3 16 plus 1 we need an extra beat that we call this so the one in the cycle is is the sum as we call it okay so so that keeps going around all the time okay right and 16 plus 1 is 17 divide that by 3 you'll get 5.6666 or something of the sort if my maths is not good right the the whole division of the the, the tal itself i mean we couldn't the they they made our, our, our dance so complex that they didn't divide by an equal number they divided divided by an uneven number so That's i guess that the log logic behind that of course is that we believe in brahma vishnu mahesh so <laughs> the trinity is behind that in that in that Okay. um so you have this the the cycle for example if if i need a a a, a 32 cycle uh 32 two, two two cycles of 16 plus the one is 33 divided by 3 that means i have to end on the 11th 
and I need to finish my, my I need to re repeat three phrases equally in order to finish on the one. Okay. So we do something like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, one. Uh -huh. right? so okay. The one is the most important thing. Uh, so the dancer does everything that they can. No, they can you, it, it's not, it's limitless. If you can think it, if you can create it, you should execute it. No? So okay. you can imagine if you have some amazing mathematicians, amazing dancers, bringing out some complexity and rhythm just to make that, um, that evening beautiful. I've learned something. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to finish up in two cycles. One T high where you'll see I'll end on the 11th. Now sure. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. I'll have to rest here, but I'll have to finish the phrase exactly three, three times equally. Only then it will be accepted. Okay. Okay. That's my two cycles. Two cycles you did. Yeah, I did. I That's learned it. something from Sindhu. Kati tata, dhage ti tata. No, no, no. Sorry. <laughs> Don't. No, please, please. Tell me. Tell Kirda me. ki tata, dhage ti tata. Uh -huh. Kati tata, kati tata, kati tata, ka tata, a. Uh -huh. Yeah. Then next cycle repeats. So it's really fun. Like me and uh, my daughter, we play. <laughs> right, 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 right. So she this, does perfectly. This is called a paran, and um, uh, you know it's a different. Uh, yeah. Now this is a dance, dance, no? dance so. phrases. That should end you somewhere on the eleventh. You okay. need two more. So you need a, not you know, to go two cycles. So the rhythms, yeah, mathematically repeatable rhythms. They're numbers, you know. Da, ek, do, teen, da, one, two, three, four, five, na. Yeah, yeah. So they're a com combination of numbers. And the movements, the coordination mm. of hands or legs, especially legs, right? We had, I think, we should also talk about the the legs tapping on the mm -hmm. floor. Mm -hmm. It's exactly matches to the rhythm. Right. It, sh it should. No? Yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. As long as you can think, uh, think it out, then you should be able to dance it. No? That's yeah. the beauty about it. Actually, you do a like bit it. of dancing as well. Uh, I do. Da it's, it's like, um, <laughs> it's, it's not traditional dance. It's self-made dance. Self-made <laughs> dancing. When you, when, once you do it, you will have an appreciation for it even more. Now you'll okay. be able to sit in the audience there and enjoy a different level of, of the dance. Ah. And that's why it's so important to get kids involved in dance early. Right. They probably will not become dancers. No? It, it, it's not possible that everyone becomes a dancer. Um, but at least they pick up. Right. Uh, They've went joined. through that, that process and they know what it is. They know the hard work behind it. So later on, they will become the audience in the future. When this is sit, very good point. It's when they sit in, in, in the performances in the show, they know they know exactly what is going on. They enjoy in a different they state. They enjoy of, and enjoy it in a different That's way. a good point. It's really nice. Yeah. yeah. Whether you become a dancer or not, doesn't matter. It right? does not it's, matter. It's, it's a exactly. knowledge. It's just uh, they go through the experience. No? So I, mm. my suggestion out there is to all the parents, if you have children, put them into dance, put them into music. Yeah. No, they must take some part of that with them. And same thing for little boys as well. No? If yeah. you have a son and he wants to dance, put him in dance. Mm. He'll become an audience later on, or a dancer and one never knows. <laughs> How many people do you prefer per a class? Um, well, I will be able to teach them definitely. Um, coming from uh, you know a classroom where we had loads of people standing next to us oh. and our guru manages. You know, yeah. our, in India, the, our, our space is so small, the, the distance that your hands open, no? that is all that you have. You move left or right, you will hit someone on the side of you. The classrooms are do that packed sometimes. Still we could. And you, you learn to, 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 <laughs> to move in the space that is given to you. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's, and how is your experience of teaching here in Germany? Do you teach to the students who came from like Indian origins, roots? Is it that easy to teach them or you also teach the European kids? Oh. Um, 
I, I, I teach everyone, no? uh, but recently there has been a, a change. No? I've seen a lot more students, uh, are Indians, of course, more Indians are coming to Germany, which is nice. Um, so I have very less European students as well at the moment. And, um, okay. Yeah, uh, I mean, nothing stops anyone from learning dance and I, I'm always ready to teach. Uh, I find that the, those those Europeans that are connected to the dance, they have some some liking or some connection to India or such. No? And those are the mm. ones that actually come out and learn the dance. What we need to do is make it more available. No? Um, that the dance still has a lot of, we still have a lot of work. I have still have a lot of work as an artist um, to make the dance out, be out there. No? It's still fresh to Germany. It's nothing like the UK where you have in every corner a dancer. Oh, no? and okay. the, people are, the people know about it. Here, I don't think every German knows um, you know, what Indian classical dance is. You stop someone or you ask an Indian, uh, a German, sorry, what is, in, what is um, Indian classical dance? You'll say something like this. No? They automatically don't have a reference to it. No? Right. And they think it's, it's Bollywood or it's some, something totally different. What do you think what we can do to... Um, uh, well, I mean, I, I, I've been working tirelessly since I've, I, I settled here. And um, I think the only way, the only way to remove um, ignorance is, is to replace it with knowledge. No? So the mm. more people see, the more people have the exposure, the yeah. more they will know. And knowing is where it changes everything. No? Okay. So we need more, we need more um, performance opportunities. We need more uh, fundings for Indian classical dance. Mm. We need more association for... Uh, Are there any associations for Kathak in Germany? Well, I, I, I guess uh, I can happily say this, that uh, we have uh, started the first um, Indian classical dance association, wow. Verein in Germany. And uh, I, I am happy to be on that board where we have our work well cut out for us now. So we have taken the first step in starting uh, uh, an association, Fairline as they call it. That's interesting. Right. Um, so we only did that. I mean, during the lockdown period, we had a lot of, I mean, not only myself, there's, there are many people behind it. Um, mm. And uh, we all came together and we sit down and we planned everything out. We got it registered and it's finally there. It's finally there and we have work to do. So we, we're making that step. We're moving in wow, the direction. That's interesting. So w what do you do in this? So what are your priorities? Well, uh, our priority is definitely uh, making awareness for Indian classical dance, okay. um, uh, Indian classical dances, sorry. Not only Kathak, but uh, okay. different. All of them ah, uh, okay. um, throughout Germany in every, every, every corner as we can. So we're connecting with um, dancers in all the cities, making a network. And then we, we you know, we reach out um, collaborations and all that is possible in that regard yeah uh, if there is a website i can i give in the in the def description uh, um we have an instagram isn't instagram page okay. i uh, i mm -hmm. i would suggest that um people yeah. follow log on for now um, until we get things we are in the process of getting a website up and running but as sure, i sure. said we yeah. we have a lot of work to do as the day, as the first uh, board that's interesting mm. And sensitive question. Yes, please. So in Kathak, I've learned that um, <clears throat> I've heard that it's a, the, the roles are a gender specific roles. Mm -hmm. So the dance is usually gender specific specific roles. Mm -hmm. There are roles gender specific. So what happens now in these days to teach Kathak? Have you faced some sort of challenges with this assigning the roles to? Um, I haven't faced any challenges as such, um, but I guess any individual who's coming to learn dance, regardless of your gender, you must have um, an idea that art is a bit uh, dynamic. Um, on the stage, you become many things no? mm. and um, one has to have that at the back of their mind. No? At one time on the stage, you, you, will, you can be a man, you can be a woman, you can be a tree, you can be an object. <laughs> you, yeah. So. Um, with that in mind, that shouldn't that shouldn't uh, limit or hinder anyone from actually coming out and learning dance. And I haven't had such an experience as yet, yeah. where um, yeah. 
you are so how many places are you uh, traveling all over germany and then teaching um currently i teach in Göttingen. um i have hamburg in the north i have frankfurt i have nuremberg um i have M munich um I'm forgetting anybody. So I you have, you physically mm, go there, travel, I and then. I physically go there. Yes, and I have naming in the Netherlands. Um, Amsterdam is there, but yeah, Lima across so in South America, Peru. So, so but I, South America, uh, Peru. Mm -hmm. You travel there? Or? I travel there as well. I'm going there in, in in two weeks time, three weeks time. So you prefer that? Uh, to do you think uh, physical presence? Uh, is the advantages over uh, online there, teaching? There, well. every um, the dance has it has to be done physically. You know, um, mm. online is good. It, it has given us a bridge to the learning process, um, but a physical presence of the teacher is still required. Um, I can tell you, fix your hands. No, uh, if you don't have an understanding of what is required, you will just leave it like that. But I will still have to come and put it in the way it should be. So one has mm. to one has to have a physical presence so i'm i'm trying to make it my regular duty to go reach out to all those students that i have across the globe and to get you know at least be there for them wow i got a silly question <laughs> <laughs> please when i uh, watch kathak dance mm -hmm. i see uh, dancers rotate fast many times mm -hmm continuously <laughs> how do they manage after the rotation these many of uh, rotations oh, how do you do the rotation how do they manage not to fall down <laughs> <laughs> um well of course we do fall down actually but you just don't see that <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> um a lot of that is in the in the uh, the riyas or the practices we call it um so we, it's part of our training right no, we, okay. yes it's part of the and the trick is of course the spotting now Wherever you need to go, you need to put. You need to look in that direction. Oh, so when okay. you're turning, you always have your eyes focused on the spot that you need to be, and not just. That's how you light. reduce the. Exactly. Uh, this is interesting. So a part of the the whole Kathak training, of course, is is taking loads and loads of circles, and you do your own practice. Do you fall long? Sometimes you get up and you start again. You know, or you have a friend with you, and you take it. Um, no, you're taking parallel to each other, right? and you practice like that as well. And another thing, what I observed is like controlling your breath because when you doing uh, vigorously, mm -hmm. suddenly you have to explain something, and you are you are breathing heavily, mm -hmm. but you have to suddenly express something peaceful, something. Mm -hmm. And I see them. I mean, it's really. Uh, I mean, you need a lot of practice for that, and also I think that improves your uh, control over your. Uh, uh, physical uh, fitness, mm -hmm. there's something brain, emotions, and everything, right? <laughs> Definitely. The, the dance is like yoga. Um, it yes. requires breath control as well. And, and that you do in your practice as well. So when you're practicing, you, you can never forget to breathe. Now you cannot and continue dancing. This, yeah. this you won't last very long. When you deprive the body of oxygen, of course, that is when you get tired. Now your, your muscles start producing lactic acid, you, get, you feel the tiredness. You're depriving the body of your mm. the oxygen that is required. So okay. you have to breathe. You you know when to breathe as well. When you're taking your turns, in between the minute you get a moment, now you pull in the breath and you keep yeah. it going. Yeah. And also like emotional control, yeah. You control your breath, and you you shift from one emotion to another emotion. Just in, even if it's a performance, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, you show different expressions like anger. Peace, calmness, uh, different things. It's really amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it also helps us at home. <laughs> That's my question. <laughs> um, don't forget that the Kathak is coming from the word Katha. Uh -huh. So storytelling. And the word okay. Katha means story. And the one who tells the story is a Kathak, basically. Ah, okay. Right. So all of that... Um, storytelling is a part of almost every classical dance form. Um, but Kathak has, uh, has developed into a highly stylized classical dance form with a lot of focus on rhythm as well. No? 
Mm. So there's a two side to the coin uh, or third side as well. Um, there's the expression and there's the, the, the rhythmic or the pure dance and the expressive, as we call it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, last time when I attended the, the performance that you invited, mm -hmm. one of the performer explained there are two kinds. The one is like, it doesn't follow the song, what is the meaning of the right. song, what is falling behind. Right, right. Now, um, um, even if the, 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 the text and the lyric is given there, it's used as a base. No? Uh, so you have the words repeating, but how many, t I mean, again, you can show if, if the text is through which avenue or path has Krishna gone down, for example. Yeah. Now, how many, you can show thousands of ways of doing it, but that doesn't mean that you can't deviate and show something else as well. Okay. So you don't always have to follow the words that are given in the text. The text is there for support. It can be continued in the background and you, you build a story on top of that text. Okay, no? okay. For example, that's also you have said something now. The mm. Krishna is going... Through which path has Krishna gone? No? So, so, so there is a possibility, there is a flexibility to express that in different forms in okay. Katak. Is it possible? It, forms, I wouldn't say, but ways. Ways. Like ways. Ah. Can, can you please show two different ways if it is possible? Um, I, I mean, you can either the literal way we corn a gali gayosham, yeah. through which path has he gone? No? Okay. But it can also be corn a gali, gali if the woman with the part in her hair. No? Uh -huh. This is also a part, a, a way. No? Okay. Or corn a gali through the, through the eyes, no? through the, the vision. That's also a path. So it's, oh. it's kind of limited. It depends on how your thinking ability as well. And then that is what you will capture the audience with. Okay, this is so much not, more interesting. Of course, of course. Because yes. what I think is till now, what I was thinking like for every uh, for every words or sentences, there is a certain fixed expressions. It's not like that, right? Not necessarily. You have a like flexibility, and then you can use your creativity oh, to show them. A lot depends on the artist, no? the person ah. who is performing it. Okay. So. If, Experience has a lot to do with um, your expressional ability as well. The more you've experienced in life is the more you can bring it back into the dance. So you find that those, the younger ones don't have a lot of experience, mm. but the older you get with the dance and you do something expressive, mm. then you get a lot of, um, nah, it's, it becomes powerful somehow. Okay. Your life experience shapes what you do in the expressional pieces, or the way you will approach it, I should say. Okay, so that means definitely we cannot build a robot which can, which can do Katak on its own. Um, <laughs> you can build a robot, of course. Um, because multi-dimensional. Multi-dimensional. Uh, ro what will the robot do for you? It will just tell you to put the hands out. For yeah. it. No, it will show you the mechanics of the dance mechanism mechanics okay. mm. but you can never replace human sentiments emotions feelings exactly how, how you can't connect a, a human being exactly like that. that the ele the human element can never be replaced and that yeah. is what the dance is about it's not right. me the mechanics of course is there the mechanism and everything is there in place but yeah that 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 thing inside, that spark inside, which reaches out, that uh, no robot can can replace that. So uh, I don't have to worry about my job being replaced. <laughs> That's what my second question is like: uh, What if, if in the future robots are teaching katak, <laughs> teaching katak? What will happen? Nothing. You'll just get the mechanics of it, no? Right. That to that yeah. to that to that. Not more than that. Exactly. So yeah. because teaching and learning is a connection exactly. process. Yeah. Exactly. A student and teacher, student they and should teacher first process. get connected and then... And it continues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think a robot can do it. <laughs> no, I definitely I not. don't think so. Yes, we can make a mission that can dance, but uh, not teach or not to really connect to the people. Right. That's a good question. Um, but, um, you know, they can uh, connect uh, all of our senses and all of that to the machine, the robot as well, that can save those movements. But, uh, I mean, it can't bring you that thought and emotion sentiment that is right. inside here. Um, yeah. It'll just yeah. give you the motion. The motion. Mm. Even though there are in the future, there are robots which can dance perfectly, but human being always gives value to uh, only human being that is performing. Right, right. 
right? Because there are calculators before. Mm -hmm. Yes, when once we immediately calculators have been invented, everyone is surprised, of course, mm -hmm. but certain period. Right. But right now, even a human being, if he is instantly doing some calculations, that is interesting. Yes, even course. now, of course, of I course. think it it stays always uh, uh, forever. Now, <laughs> the same dance, uh, you can have tr three different dancers um, dancing the same expressional piece, yeah. and you will sit there and say, "I like this one more." No? That's because everyone is carrying their own uniqueness, own personality. They bring their element into the piece. Ah, okay. Right? A robot, a robot will just give you the same repetition of the same thing over and over. There won't be variety. There won't be anything unique or mm -hmm. special or yeah. the personal touch as such. No? Yes. So, yeah. That's AI cool. not an option. <laughs> in my, in my, um, <laughs> my view. I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so do you that um, can we a little bit go back to your childhood? Mm -hmm. So why did you get interested in Kathak? I it was I was I mean I wasn't really drawn to the dance as such. Uh, I, my inspiration basically came uh, from my sister. Mm. Uh, she was the one. Uh, when we finished school, we had this little gap in our summer break and, and we were thinking, what should we do? No, we didn't know what to do. So we said, let's go join the Indian Culture Center and do something. Okay. And then my sister said, um, she'll go do dancing, Katak, and I will, I'll learn to play tabla. Uh, and oh. we, we, we did it like that. And of course, when I, I, um, I went to the Indian Culture Center, um, you know, you start enjoying, you liking what you're doing and... Um, yeah, and then uh, there you only used to learn tabla. You started... I, I used to learn tabla only. Of course, I, uh -huh. I've, I've seen Katak over there, but it wasn't something that I I, I really wanted to do. No, it's not like I, oh, as a little boy, I always wanted to learn Katak. That was my dream. It just never. It was never the case. Um, it was a coincidence that um, at that time the the dance teacher uh, at the Indian Culture Center she needed some of the boys. To participate in a dance drama, you know, they give these boys different roles, uh, mm. guards, king, whatever. And she took the tabla boys because the dance class generally never have, has a lot of boys inside. So she took the tabla boys and uh, she put them in the dance drama. Okay. And there she probably saw that I, I was a little bit coordinated and was moving slightly different for whatever reason. <laughs> um, so she asked uh, if I can join the, the dance class. No, I, I didn't want to. Um, mm. One thing was that I had to pass the tabla class to get to the dance class. And every time I do that, all the boys will be seeing that I'm going to the dance class. And the, the dance class was filled with only girls. I would have been the only boy standing in there too. Not an uncomfortable feeling. Uh -huh. So I did it once or twice and I said, oh, I don't think I'll do this. No? But you were doing really nice. At the yeah, time. I was, I guess. No? Um, uh, and then this dance teacher changed and a man came. Um, he's uh, Guru Heman Panwar. He now lives in Canada. And it was the very first time I've seen a man dance in Katak. Okay. And, and um, I, the energy and uh, the force and the power that it had was like, it's, 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 it looked it look nice, no? something different, no? and something had it had something. And I, then he said, "Why don't you come and learn with me?" And I said, "Okay, you know." Now at least we're two men in the <laughs> in the dance class, and I started learning. And the more the more you start get into it, is the more it, it, it gets more and more and more interesting. Once you hit it, you no, know, once you've touched it or tasted it, you mm. can't come out of it. Okay, and it's it's so pulling. And from that onwards? From there onward, I, started, I basically started my training. And then uh, I, I, I went to India. I, I lived in India, learned from... Um, but, but you didn't born and brought up in India? No, I wasn't. No, I wasn't. Can you tell a bit about that? Um, I was born in uh, South America, in Guyana, uh, Georgetown, Guyana. And um, okay. well, uh, there's a, a big Indian population there. It's you not... Know, uh, Diwali, Holi, all of these things we celebrate. So oh. we have an Indian cultural center. It's filled with um, Indian music and Indian dance and all of that. So the connection to the Indian culture is it's, it's still very, very vibrant in Guyana. And uh, yeah. But uh, where did it happen? Like with Mr. Hamad Palwar, your 
Right. Uh, that happened in Guyana? That or happened in Guyana. That happened ah, in Guyana. Okay, so okay. I started basically outside of India. And then I went back to in I went to India and I started learning in India professionally ah, okay. from the Katakendra, which is the, the premier institution for learning Katak in India. So even now if anyone really wants to delve into Katak, India is the only place or best place? Um <laughs> I mean, I will. I will. I mean, the 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 atmosphere that India gives you. Um, that's the I right point. I don't yeah. think, uh, from my experience of of moving through several continents, several places, several cities, uh, there's a drive, there's a push, there's a craze, there's a, a greediness for the dance, you know, that everybody, you know, that only India can give it to you. Um, to replicate that, it will be hard. Out do that outside of India. I do but we can that. try, you know, we can try to replicate it. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I was I was studying to become a chartered accountant at that time too. Ah. And um, it was the decision whether to, to continue with my chartered accounting and to do the dance. And I made the decision to do the dance. Okay. And I left that away. So coming to your the teaching session. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, what do you think, uh, which qualities do you really want from students before they come to uh, learn Katak? Or what do you think some qualities they are lacking during teaching? Or what are the challenges that oh you face gosh. from the ch um, <laughs> from the students? Uh, experience again, um, you know, every, every, every student that comes, they're so unique. Hmm. Um, Everyone has their own situations, personal situations, personal circumstances. Um, I'm talking for the adults, basically. You know, mm -hmm. uh, they have studied something and is now working um, professionally in a different field altogether, where dance becomes a hobby. So we don't have this professional craze or oh. professional drive at the moment. Passion, or right? So it is basically seen as a uh, as a hobby. And, um, but hobby can be done passionately, be, right? It can be done passionately as well. But uh, if you try to force the students to, to do the things, no? you apply that force, I think that is when they will say, no, thank you. Mm. So that is one of the challenges definitely that one faces is that you have people, I mean, these were women probably who wanted to dance at some point in their lives and now is finding the opportunity to do it. No? And then telling them, well, you, you come, you have not done my work. Why are you standing in front of me? No? Make sure that you know the, the, no, the, the, the pieces before you. You cannot do that at all. No? Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, this is there everywhere. Like even yeah. if you uh, go into, uh, if I want to go to a gym mm. and even in there, the initially everyone joins and then 80% of them will drop out uh, in the uh, first few months. Yeah. Uh, I think it applies everywhere. That's I mean, first they want to really taste it. They want to taste it. And um, I mean, how they're learning and what they're doing is also absolutely fine. Uh, they're so inspirational, these women. I think they inspire me more than I inspire them, actually. Because you find that they come from all walks of life. Um, mothers with children, you know, some... It, it's absolute, absolutely impressive to see what they do sometimes. Mm. In, this, in the short time that they have connected with the dance and trying to learn it and trying to do things as well. Um, of course, you know, um, we can argue that a little bit more commitment is needed. If you have a hobby, you also have to work for the hobby and all of that. All of these arguments come into play. Even if they drop out or uh, just uh, learning as a hobby, mm. at least they increase their level of, uh, what is that, a state of enjoying the... Exactly. Uh, to become a best audience, right, I mean, right. for example. I think for me, uh, what is most important, if you're talking about a much younger generation like your daughter now who's coming to learn, I think, um, uh, you know, just ha just having that uh, that little dedication or that commitment to what you're doing. You know? And and that's that's all one needs. You know? Just mm. be committed to what you're doing and give your, whenever you're in the dance class, give your 100%. Mm. The rest I will do. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, they, I mean, like, 
the kathak is not only for women right it is a no it's, it's men can dance it right? absolutely fine but uh, usually the ratio is less yeah less men uh, prefer to join kathak um I, here here yes in, yeah? in, in yes that's mm. that's mental conditioning from a child if one thinks about it you tell the little boy okay you should be playing football you shouldn't be doing dancing uh, so you already condition the child that it should do something like this and not that direction yeah i mean when i watch uh, kathak performances what i felt like uh, uh, 10 minutes a vigorous performance mm-hmm. is almost equal to half an hour of bike uh, in terms of burning the calories i felt like that <sighs> indeed it is indeed it is every performance it feels like dying and being reborn again <laughs> you know it takes <laughs> it takes so okay. much energy na no, to go there and throw all that energy out mm. um, emotionally, emotionally uh, physically physically mentally yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it takes a lot um, i mean it's a it, it's a good good thing to choose uh, for yeah. the physical exercise also definitely definitely it's 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 a complete uh, physical exercise you don't need anything you don't need anything after <laughs> that actually yeah no that's interesting yeah. but you know the ratio in india is different now i'm coming from a a, a school ah. um that uh, actually has a lot of boys learning kathak ah okay so i'm not alone there, there are several like me as well <laughs> okay. some of my colleagues yeah So can we take any song uh, to practice kathak or just to enjoy myself after mm-hmm. learning western music <laughs> or only should we stick to indian classical music um if question. if you want to take any song that means you you're looking to combine fusing mm. kathak movements on something um, okay. the dance has its own sahitya literature literature na no, that it it uh, uses as long as you understand the lyrics and then you put it into uh, expression e- right exactly exactly um again if you want to choose something that is western na no, then let it be something mm that is, that suits the dance na no? oh ah, yeah okay no, if you're going to okay. take some dish <laughs> with you then then it's difficult ha be because careful. of this tapping be careful exactly you know um, right. fusion should be good fusion nothing is wrong with using German poetry we can express on it yeah or uh, english did, poetry did you try that or no, i haven't done that as yet no no I, it's interesting like if you just take uh, some uh, german poetry or yeah. try to express in kathak i ha- i have done that in spanish to to really attract uh, uh, the german people <laughs> so some idea came no, up no <laughs> no it, nothing nothing is stopping again you need pro- good you know a good yeah. structure a good text something and and present it in a proper way proper you know? way exactly that's all mm. that's all this is interesting i've i've done it a little bit with spanish uh, spanish oh you already tried oh, yeah uh, yeah uh, when i was in mexico we um, we, we we attempted it uh, Uh, but it's a different feeling for the dance as well now because i don't have that uh, that familiar language sanskrit or or hindi in the background now yeah um but again nothing stops you from emoting on it so and um, what are your next plans for 5 or 10 years wow or your life that's, ambitions oh, that's a very far um plan into the future <laughs> struggling with figuring out uh, tomorrow's plan <laughs> uh Um well uh, I I'm here I mean I will continue to spread kathak to every corner to the best of my ability as long as I have my health and, and strength I will continue to make that my ho- main focus to bring kathak to every part of Germany Europe as much as I can Um I've been caught in a cycle where um I now have to take you know because i've started all these these teachings and classes um and moving from city to city it kind of takes my energy out and less is left for creativity in the sense i managed to keep my practice my dance in uh no in check mm-hmm. um if i continue like this i see i have very less uh pathways for being more creative because my energy has now been channeled in a different direction but um let's see with time I want I want to get uh, more creative and um mm. I believe again with there's but a will there's a way so we I'm going to find a way to do both no I'm going to find a way to do both setting it all up is it took many years no this is not doesn't come easily no 
with no institution helping you, you know, to, to let people know that you're there, that you teach good Kathak and make it work. And then you have to be regular traveling yeah. down to these groups and traveling all over and inspiring these women, by inspiring people to learn. Can you take help from German government? Did you try? Because th there's an association, right? You mm -hmm. have already started. Um, I mean, uh, that's our own institution. Ah, no? okay. That's okay. our, you know, we now through that institution, we'll be able to reach out to government institutions ah. to, to get funding or get money or get things like this. No? So mm. that's step one. Okay, okay. Anything else you would like to share or message to your students? Um, and what I would love to say is that, uh, you know, if anyone desirous of learning dance to do reach out, um, especially more so Katak, I'm in many cities across Germany, do find me, do connect with me. If you have kids, um, do ensure that you send them out to the dance. No, um, as I mentioned, that's very important that they go through the phase. So let, let them be a part of music and dance. And uh, dance is very inspiring, very creative. Um, it helps you in those times where you feel you, you know, you don't, you can't find yourself and you need to introspect a little bit. The dance gives you that mental stability, that mm. private space, especially in your own reality to reflect, rethink, redo. So many, yeah. so many things are there. So dance is a part of life dance is life enjoy it do it learn it you can enjoy your own even when you are alone exactly you don't get bored no, just no. no just 10 minutes or 20 minutes of practicing at home i have a also. dialogue with myself in the mirror no? when yeah. I'm dancing <laughs> okay okay ah <laughs> exactly that's interesting. So yeah. you, you talk to yourself in the, the this, this form of dance. This, no, I think it'll be better if I do this. <laughs> <laughs> you have your own okay. dialogues going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with that, um, I thank you very, very much. Thank you for so much. your time. Really for having me. It's a pleasure. Um, I'm glad that you're doing this uh, and to making dance, uh, you know, a bit more awareness for dance. Yes, in, yes. In classical yeah. art forms. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank yeah. you so much. I thank you too. <laughs> <laughs>